The last weeks Mark and I spent a lot of time to bring our JRM1 VTOL jet forward and in this video I want to give you a view behind the curtain how the workflow is done, what our thoughts are, why we do this and that and also the latest developments. So come with me on this wonderful journey. In the first video I talked about how to start such a VTOL jet project to begin with the engines and take the look that they fit in the fuselage and also engineering the wing and now we go more and more into details. The next step was to print a jet in a smaller scale to get a better overview to the whole design and also to figure out some failures on the surface. Next was optimizing the duct of the main engines cause this has a very big priority and it is not straight cause there is a level difference between the inlet and the nozzle and also we have to go around the main wing joiners so this became a bit difficult and we get some help from our CAD program which shows us where the airflow is not optimal. This is our final design, very smooth curved, you see there is no big change in the color of these little round air streams and we are super, ha super happy with this and we have to um, check this uh, anyway on a thrust strand but it looks nice and I think it will also work very well. Also the swiveling mechanism was optimized that the EDF gets most possible air from vertical position and also from horizontal position that we get best efficiency and most long flight and hover time. To evaluate our design we want to go a little smaller uh, with the first printed jet with two 50 mm size EDFs before we go to the big 2 meter long version with 90 mm EDFs and here you can see how design we um, one of these 50 mm ones by using a data sheet to put it in our CAD and do all the fittings around and make it perfect fit to the ducting. <music> We rebuilt it as realistic as possible to make sure that everything which is on the wheel part we also got in our cat that when it comes to assembly nothing will disturb or we get any failure afterwards. While the ducting after the EDF was already designed, the inlet ducting was a whole new chapter and has also been optimized as possible that we don't have any loss of thrust. After we were happy with the aerodynamics, we keep an eye on the mechanic of the swiveling technique itself. It is, it is made from um, 8mm carbon tube which is put on ball bearings. Altogether we got four of them, one on the outside and two in between. So the swiveling itself should run very smooth. Right after this we start developing our landing gear because we want to make sure that it will fit in the whole concept. We stayed focused on to make most parts printed also to keep it simple and durable. These are our very first designs but step by step we make it more lightweight, better printable, look <laughs> much nicer and Mark will tell you most details now. This is the latest development of our main gear uh, undercarriage for the JRM-01 that Renee and I have been working on. In this particular 3D model you can see we've got a braking system that's actuated by servo. Just twist that up there and um, we've got that already currently printed and working. We're just tweaking a couple of things. 
couple of details here. We've got a cable or a power um, cable clip on the lower strut and on the upper strut. That's going to be 3D printed into the part. We've also opted for an option for carbon printed PLA uh, reinforced rods that go through the main strut on the hinge points and the axle point and we have an alignment issue or an alignment feature uh, that allows us to position those axles in place. The first prototype was printed in lightweight PLA and reinforced with carbon rods but later on we decided to print the whole part in carbon reinforced PLA. Bumbolet is printing our latest design of the landing gear. This is the upper spread part with this reinforcement. Four walls and four upper and four lower layers. 9% gyroide infill, 30% print speed, and 1000 mm per second travel. Printed with color type, lightweight PLA. 46% flow and it looks nice. Here's the 90mm wheel getting printed. 20% infill, two outer walls, printed with, with color fab Vario Shore TPU. And this is the first print of the landing gear with brake in carbon reinforced PLA on the Bamboo Lab. The quality was from the very first moment absolutely amazing. I used the preset profiles and afterwards I did little optimization. And the Bamboo Lab printed a wonderful carbon fiber PLA lower strut. Quality is amazing. Just look at this. That's how the part looks like in a bamboo slicer. And here we can see that it is nicely aligned. Two walls, 9% gyroid infill. And then we figured out how and where to place the landing gear and also if the size fits that we have enough ground clearance. But we can only do a rough positioning, especially with the main landing gear, cause for its position we need to know the exactly position of the CG and that's why we built up this uh, smaller version with the 250mm EDFs to figure out where is the CG because the main landing gear should, be, should stay close to it to get best ground handlings and the um, best weight on each wheel. Also for the rotation while starting and landing the main landing gear position is absolutely important. And now Mark will introduce our 50mm version a little closer to you. As part of the process of developing our VTOL jet, the JRM01, Rene and I are also looking at a trial size jet with 50mm EDFs. Uh, this will be the first jet that will be printed to evaluate some of the centre of gravity issues and also some of the VTOL issues that we're uh, encountering or we will encounter. Um, in this particular model, which isn't our 2 metre model, I think it's around 1.6 metres or so, uh, we have developed the ducting at the bottom and the way it operates so it can seal when it's in its forward flight position and also uh, open up for vertical flight. We have um, also developed the lower cover which we can remove to get access to uh, these components. These parts would be hidden with the lower cover. Um, also our linkage design has been developed with small bearing blocks either side contained in the fuselage here are bearing blocks missing, but we would have symmetrical bearing blocks. And the 
servo linkage arm that drives this assembly. Uh, once we are completed with these 3D models, Renault will print out the parts and uh, assemble, and we'll be looking at doing some preliminary test flights of the smaller JRM version before we head off and finalize the large two meter jet. Next, we focused on more and more details, like here the vector nozzles to make them move, put them in the correct position, make room for all the inside electronics like the servos, receivers, gyro and flight controller. The idea is to get a big compartment in between the fuselage with the battery right after the front ETF, followed by the servo for the swiveling nozzles. Then we can see the flight controller and the gyro. Also the receiver will be placed there. And then a tunnel follows where all the cable can run for the elevator servos, rudder servos and especially the vector servos. And we got an, a big hatch over it to reach everything very well. Also some skids were installed which the jet will land on cause this little version won't have any landing gear and also for the bigger versions this skid will save the bottom of the jet from any damage. For the past few nights Rene and I have been working on our proof of concept model for the JRM01. This is a uh, model that is 60% of the size of the eventual 2 meter um, plane that we wish to develop. In this instance we've worked on the vector nozzle uh, assembly and linkages. As you can see uh, a lot of the detailing is now been taken care of. We've split the model up into sections. Um, essentially all the different colours indicate printable parts left and right of the midline of the jet. We have, uh, as we said in the previous video, resolved the, the ducted um, VTOL linkages and if we hide the or if we go through a section view in the jet we're now populating the internals with um, placement of servos batteries flight controllers and uh, other equipment um, in this instance here if i hide the whole entire body we can see we have the linkages resolved for the uh, edfs in the main body we're looking at using torsion springs to facilitate that second flap that runs along the face of the uh, fan cover. And in the rear, we have our linkages for the vector nozzles. As you may have noticed in our side view, we've had to add some skids to the underside of the belly and some covers to the servo linkages in the tail. Um, at the moment we are not looking at using any retractable undercarriage on this particular size jet. It's the smaller of the two jets that we are developing. Um, so for vertical takeoff and for, for landing we've opted for these uh, very long uh, skids running the length of the body. Also helps uh, when working on the jet. So these are some details we've had to add not necessarily the most attractive, but uh, they are functional. And we are hoping that uh, when we get to our larger jet that we could possibly uh, get away with using these. Um, unfortunately, if there is a mechanical failure in the undercarriage, it is always great to have these skids available on the underside belly, uh, just in case you have to do a gear up landing. And therefore, none of the duct work or any of the delicate um, panel work on the underside gets damaged. Here we show a bit of a cross section through the jet, showing the shelling out and thinning of sections, optimization of placement for internal components, and detailing of the individual parts that will be 3D printed. Um, areas like the canopy, we're allowing for magnetic. Uh, connection of the canopy parts. Uh, the canopy will be a one piece and as you can see here the two pockets for the magnets. Uh, we have carbon rods running through the length of the jet for stiffness and strength. Um, we have one large access cover over the top of the electronics bay and uh, battery bay. 
You can see the breakthrough here on the side of the fuselage to the external wing where we will be able to feed and route cabling. Underside here is the cover that's removable to get access to the EDFs that uh, rotate through 90 degrees and we have separate front duct intakes that uh, we will be looking at uh, optimizing and uh, seeing if we can change angles and so forth. So these are replaceable and we will be able to test different duct designs. Mark and I are actually very happy with the construction. Even if there are difficulties, at the end it works out very well. And I think in about two weeks it will be ready printed and we can <laughs> check um, results also in, also in reality. And if you like the project and want to support it, you will find some links underneath in the video descriptions. And I wish you a very nice day and see you in the next video. Bye bye.